It's cold out, zero degrees this morning here in Michigan. We're gonna go to some thrift stores, find some stuff to resell on eBay and Amazon, do some more sourcing like that, go to Walmart, look for some stuff there too, uh, and hopefully learn some fun stuff along the way. My name is Blake, thanks for watching, and uh, I think you're gonna like this video. I'm doing what I normally do when I come to this thrift store. I go to the electronics, and if you see what I see, you're looking at two pretty big potential winners. This is a Go Video DVD recorder slash VCR. I bought one of these, a different brand, a few days ago. This one, uh, I pulled off the shelf. It turned on, but it did not eject DVDs, and that's a pretty simple fix usually, but it was 30 bucks. Uh, and I, I already have kind of a backlog of electronics to test, so I said, you know what? I'm going to leave that there. This one, however, the Sony CFD ZW770. It's a boom box with speakers. I bought that for 20 bucks, and then I bought the remote on eBay for $750. I'll sell it for about $250 on Amazon. Going rate is about $150 on eBay. This is a Timex personal computer, the Sinclair model with some external 16 kilobyte RAM. Very awesome. I bought both of these. I'm not going to test them. I'll sell them as is. I'll take off those stickers. There is a bit of damage there. It kind of sucks. This is a collector item. Uh, I'm going to sell this for 80 bucks free shipping just because I want someone to have it. I want to be a part of the sale. Over to the shelves where they put all the knickknacks. This is a Rocky Patel cigar box. If you know about cigars, you know it's a pretty good brand. I thought that might have been a Sony branded, uh, like a Walkman CD holder. It wasn't. It was kind of cool, but not really worth anything. A lot of this stuff here I think is neat but it isn't worth selling. The Rubik's Cube, there were two of them. I bought both of them for $3 a piece. They go for about 15, 16 bucks, so I'll sell them both for 30, see if I can save on shipping. Over to the bin area, not like the Goodwill bins or the Salvation Army bins, but just bins full of stuff. I'm looking for new in box stuff, new in package stuff, uh, old stock, dead stock. I think I found um, like a little flute right there. It says, Tyler, the coin sorters are cool, but not really. You know, stuff that's not worth reselling. Uh, generally in here, I can find some some diamonds in the rough like this. This Music 20 Questions should sell on Amazon for about 40 bucks. I paid $3 in the store. But a lot of this is just, um, well, not really, not really worth selling. Not really worth buying to resell. At least it is good to have, I think. That's the flute I was telling you about, or a quarter, I guess, actually. Not worth anything. And also, kind of gross. Um... Would you clean that out before you sold it? All that spittle in there from an elementary school student? I don't want to really think about that. It can be kind of overwhelming seeing a rack full of boxes like this. Just start pulling things off and looking them up. The cat puzzle, uh, that was missing pieces, but it was kind of funny. It had hair. If these were blue multicolor lights, I'd have bought those for myself. I'm looking for blue LED lights. These Wagner, uh, they're painter rolls. There's two of them. One over on the left of your uh, screen, I'll grab it in a second. What you do is you put ink on there or paint or something and it rolls a pattern off. They wanted four bucks a piece for these. Maybe they were selling for about 17. So uh, that was on the edge, but I passed because I didn't see strong demand. This is kind of cool. Collector micro cards of Major League Baseball teams. I don't know why they made this. You can't really use those micro cards to play, but it's a cool collector item. Still not worth buying to resell. This was so heavy. I was looking for a maker's mark, but hey, the box was right there. Didn't have to worry about it. The brand is Classic Treasures. It's a wind-up snow globe music box. They do sell, but they wanted 15 bucks for it. It was very heavy, so I said, eh, I'll leave this on the shelf. All right, pay attention. If you see this, you're going to want to buy it. This blue ceramic Starbucks mug right there from 2016. There's a bit of damage to the gold on top, but not a lot. Uh, these two sold for between $34 and $45, and right now the going rate's just south of $50, so I paid $4 bucks for this, and I'll sell it for $48, or best offer, probably get around $45 for it. I checked out the clothing racks, and I want to show you this jersey right here. Now, I sold my Matt Stafford jersey from the other video I posted a few weeks ago for $40, bucks, got what I wanted. This one, $12.90. So kind of in the same price range, but look at it. It just looks so flat to me. It's a newer, like the 2019 or 20 model. Uh, I said, you know what? I don't think it's worth 40 bucks. Probably worth about 20 bucks, so I'll pass on that. I did buy this American Apparel. It's a National Park uh, Sagawara, something like that. National Park, really cool Roadrunner design. So I bought that for a buck 90. I'll sell it for about 25 or 30 bucks, I think. This Nike tee caught my eye, but it's reproduction, so it's not worth anything more than like $15. I'm always 
checking out books. Now, between this giant Shakespeare reference textbook and this Bible to the right, what do you think is worth more? If you guess the Bible, you are right. These old Bibles can pretty reliably sell for like 20 bucks or more for me. I bought four at this stop. Uh, I'll sell them all for about 20 bucks. People love to collect Bibles and I love to sell them. Here's a quick little tip. Plush animals, they sometimes have barcodes on the tag. I know it's hard to know what they are, but like this one right here, you scan that barcode, you see what it is. It was worth like 18 bucks uh, free shipping, so I passed, but just now you know. This next item really caught my eye. I thought, oh man, is that an urn? Do I have some great clickbait? But no, it was not an urn. You can see on the top, uh, the, the the top of it, whatever you call that, the this thing I'm picking up, there's a spoon area on the bottom. Um, it says made in Thailand. It's extremely lightweight, pretty cool diamond brand, but just there's no demand on eBay, so I left it. This is what I ended up getting. This is the biggest thing. Uh, I'm kind of concerned it won't sell on Amazon. But it goes on eBay, so not that worried. There were some Bibles in there. These were two bucks in total. I'm gonna leave them in there. I'll just show you though. Uh, alarm clock, new inbox, 20 questions, two Rubik's cubes. This is probably the biggest, like, I don't know, ROI find. This is a something siren Starbucks cup. There's a little bit of damage there, but still pretty cool. And then my favorite thing is gonna be this the timex personal computer don't know if it works paid a bit up for it but um i don't know it's like a this is an artifact of history pretty cool what's the weirdest thing that you've ever found at a thrift store and like is there anything that if you see you just won't touch i know some people are creeped out by old shoes i honestly i don't understand um a lot of people's disgust with old shoes or old clothing because every clothing that you buy new is only new for like 15 minutes, you know, until you put it on and then your own body's filth is covering it up. And it isn't even just your body. We're, you know, you could be walking into a, let's say you wear a new shirt into a thrift store. How much disgusting dead skin flakes and fecal particulates you think are floating around in the air? People don't like to think about that, but it's a fact of life that uh, it's kind of gross to exist. And so people say, oh, used clothing is dirty. I don't like it. Well, yeah, everything is dirty. All right, going into Walmart, we need painter's tape for packing cards, packing tape for packing packages, and a box that is uh, at least 19 by 13. I sold a 50 CD carousel player. Uh, I need this 19 by 14 by 17 box to put that in there. Kind of a unique size, but they cost a buck 50 here. The packing tape I like to buy online. It's cheaper, but I had to have some today. So here I am at Walmart buying an eight pack. And finally, I'm getting some painter's tape to tape down the cards and top loaders I sell. It's an added layer of security. It's pretty cheap and it makes sure the cards don't bounce around when they're in the envelope. I was walking over to clearance and I saw this. This shows you that no matter what you do, it's gonna get ripped off the echelon connect sport hmm, i wonder what that is copying what do you think let's speed through clearance i'm looking for anything that's like hugely marked down like 90 percent off the way it works in here i'm in southeastern michigan is there are some hubs and some some specific times of year like march middle of summer uh, and right before christmas when there are huge discounts but all this stuff we're seeing right now is like seven bucks off not enough to resell. Not bad if you want to buy on your own, but just not good for resellers like myself. All right, one more Salvation Army, then back to the warehouse. Back over to electronics. I'm looking up everything on Amazon, this Xbox 360 Connect. They don't sell very fast, and I have a few in stock already, so I'm going to leave that. These Sony alarm clocks. If I can get these for like two or three bucks, I'll usually buy them because they sell for like 25 pretty routinely. Sometimes on Amazon, the price... Um, shoots down, people undercut each other, and that is when I sell them. But just to have like four or five in stock usually works to my benefit, but they're all too expensive here, so I left them on the shelf. Looking through DVDs now, this Blues Clues VHS tape sells for like nine bucks on eBay, about 12 bucks on Amazon. Um, I did put that in the cart. I got a bunch of uh, Disney DVDs. What I do with these Disney DVDs, they cost 50 cents here, two for a dollar, and I just lot them up in lots of 10 or 25 and sell them on eBay for about three bucks a piece. It's not like the most routine, reliable seller, but it is, you, you can get 60 bucks for 20 DVDs. That's not bad. Um, you sell probably one every like three or four months. Uh, so it's not the kind of thing that I have 
I'm always trying to buy, but if I'm out there and the store's kind of dry, then I'm going to buy some Disney DVDs if the price is below a dollar a piece, you know, 50 cents like they are here. I went over to the glassware. This, it's like a two-sided glass caray, maybe it's called. I think it's for like olive oil and vinegar, any oil really and vinegar. That seems to be like the look they're going for. I saw one similar item for 40 bucks on eBay. It was actually the exact same item. Uh, it said it was made in Italy. I didn't see an Italy stamp. Uh, you know, there's no sales history. Uh, like with this thing right here, there's a piece of hair in there. That's kind of gross. I found the exact same one for 40 bucks. No sales history. Because I'm kind of a beginner when it comes to glassware, I left these on the shelf. Maybe someone who knew more about them would cross post on Etsy and Mercari and wherever they want to. But for me, I'm just like, you know what? I don't have to have 25 vases in my warehouse. I can just go with what I know. One of the things I do know is discontinued products. These Tide Buzz refill packs, there were two of them. They sell for about eight bucks a piece on eBay. They wanted three or four bucks in the store. Look at that, ultrasonic cleaning fluid. Uh, it's a Black & Decker add-on or, or I guess, not add-on, but it's what you use for a Black & Decker device. Two of them, like I said, um, I did not see an expiration date. That date code there is kind of long and hard to decipher. I don't think it would matter on eBay if they are technically expired, but they're just so expensive and there's so little meat on the bone and they're kind of heavy and they might get damaged in shipping. I left them. Not everything that's kind of cool and unique, unfortunately, is worth selling. I wish it was that way, but it's not. I'm looking up these soaps as well, or lotions or hand creams. In the back there, that's a Disney. The The brand is junk food. Never heard of that. They want four bucks for it here. It's only worth like eight bucks on eBay. Kind of cool, but not not worth it. This, uh, this let's see, Pretty uh, on Provence. Uh, that's, I don't know what that is. That's a brand, I guess. I couldn't find any similar, uh, similar comps. And I didn't know enough about the brand name to buy it. I went over to the bins here and I saw these Rolodex organizers. Now I'm going to go on a little talk right here. Rolodex is a gated brand on Amazon. That scares me, especially on low value products. Why does this scare me? Because gated brands, sometimes, even though you might not be doing anything wrong, are going to come after you if you sell their products as new. That's only worth like $8 profit. Am I going to take a risk to get my whole Amazon account banned for $8 of profit? No, absolutely not. I found two of them. There's one down here. So I thought maybe on eBay, but on eBay, they go for like 15 bucks. I only want two bucks here. So like the numbers are not so bad. You know, it is profitable, but just it's going to take forever to sell. It's kind of a stupid product. So I said, just, you know, it's going in the cart. But even though it's going in the cart, it went back on the shelf because I'm not I'm not taking risks over $10 bills. Here's something to look out for. Wood blocks for knife sets. I just bought a knife set. It was a uh, Heinke, Heinkel. This is another German brand. Hufstoff. Wustoff. Uh, this goes for about 25, 30 bucks on eBay. It's new. You know, you can tell by the, the plastic wrap. If it had the knife, it'd be worth like $500. Um, but this block alone, like 30 bucks. So I left it. It's just too heavy. Really cool mid-century modern Pyrex coffee pitcher. Got the cool gold leaf. There was a little bit of degradation on the, the lip of it, the neck. Um, they wanted six bucks for it. There's a lot of these selling. Probably could have got 28 to maybe $35. But it's glassware, it's going to cost like 10 bucks to ship, and it's got those imperfections. So even though I like it a lot, I left it. That almost never happens, but I got skunked in there. Nothing. There were a few books, some DVDs, but the line was really long, and I was going to make like $10. So we're just going to go back, go home. I think if I were in that same position three or four years ago, or maybe a little bit longer, I would have bought most of that stuff. I would have bought the Pyrex coffee glass i would have bought the pottery i would have bought all those dvds and i would have bought uh, the the rolodex all that stuff thinking about that i think some of the best advice i can give new sellers and like what my biggest mistake was earlier in my reselling career when i began you know really um trying to do a lot of that on amazon and ebay is i would buy too much stuff and i didn't i i was too uh hopeful i guess i was too I put too much weight on the upside and I wasn't realistic about the sell-through rate. 
um, like those Rolodexes. Yeah, I could have made 40 bucks on Amazon probably, but the, the one might sell every two years. And I've got a warehouse full of stuff, and a lot of that is because I bought things two or three or four years ago that just didn't sell. And luckily, I've been able to make enough money where it's not that big of a deal. I, you know, I'm paying for the warehouse no matter what, and so the space is just full, but it's messy, and it's kind of unorganized, it's very unorganized. Uh, the, the front part of the warehouse especially. And it's just like, I, if I could go back and redo things, I would not have bought so much stuff. I would have looked for any chance I could not to buy things, I'd only buy home runs. Because the time you take listing and shipping things that aren't home runs and storing onto them and holding onto them and the mental space they take up and the physical space they take up, just really isn't worth it. That is really what I think is like, you know, focus on that uh, and you will, have a profitable resale business or any business for that matter. I think I'm gonna end the video here. I appreciate you guys watching. I'm going back to do just some more boring <laughs> listing work and shipping work. Uh, but I hope you've had fun with this. Hope you appreciated the video. Hope you learned a little bit. Uh, and I hope that the next time you go out and you see some things and you're kind of like, ah, I don't know if I should buy that. You pause for a moment and say, hey, you know what? I will let this slide. I'll wait for a home run, and in the meantime, I'll learn more about this niche so when I come on an item like this next time, I will have 100% for sure knowledge of if it's a good sale or a bad sale. Uh, because that uncertainty, that's where people who are beginners or even more advanced resellers are losing the most money. I have a secret message for you, and that message is the letter O. I want you to write down the letter O.